Hello friends, in this video we will discuss the topic kidney channelopathies or syndromes. These topics are very important for NEET PG. Almost every year at least one question is asked related to this topic. So do watch full video. We are going to discuss 5 syndromes and their approach to diagnosis. Before actually going to the topic, let's see the basic structure of nephron. Important channels we need to study are first sodium potassium and 2 chloride channel which is present in thick ascending loop of Henle. It reabsorbs sodium, potassium and chloride. Along with this, water is also reabsorbed. This pump is responsible for maintaining voltage gradient in nephron which is necessary for absorption of calcium. Next is sodium chloride pump which is present in distal convoluted tubule. It reabsorbs sodium and chloride. And last is ENA channel or INAC channel which is present in collecting duct. It helps in reabsorption of sodium and water and excretion of potassium and hydrogen ion. First disease is Barter syndrome. It is autosomal recessive disorder where there is defect in sodium potassium 2 Cl pump in thick ascending loop of Henle. Along with this channel, there is also chloride channel which reabsorbs chlorine and ROMK channel which reabsorbs potassium. These both channels are also inhibited in Barter syndrome. So due to low water and sodium absorption, there will be low volume state or low BP state. This will stimulate renin angiotensin aldosterone system which will increase aldosterone which acts on inac channel to increase the excretion of hydrogen ions and potassium ions and in turn it will cause metabolic alkalosis and hypokalemia. As I discussed in previous slide, this pump is also responsible for voltage gradient for calcium absorption. So there will be increased urinary loss of calcium that is hypercalciuria which will cause hypocalcemia. This chlorine channel is also present in inner ear hair cells and is also affected which will cause sensory neural hearing loss. Now drug of choice for Barter syndrome is endomethazine and steroids are also used in treatment. Next is Gittelman syndrome. It is also autosomal recessive disorder. Here there is defect in sodium chlorine pump in distorted convoluted tubule. Along with this channel there is also TRPM6 channel which reabsorbs magnesium. This channel is also affected. So there is increased excretion of chlorine, sodium and magnesium. Along with that water absorption is also affected because we know that sodium goes with water. So it will cause polyuria and low volume or low BP state which will stimulate renin angiotensin aldosterone system which will cause metabolic alkalosis and hypokalemia same as like in Barter syndrome. Magnesium is required for release of parathyroid hormone from chief cells of parathyroid gland. As magnesium is low, this function is affected resulting in hypocalcemia but urinary calcium is normal. Treatment includes mainly supportive management like salt and fluid supplementation. Next is Liddell syndrome. It is autosomal dominant condition where there is increased function mutation of inac channel in collecting duct. It causes excess retention of sodium and water which will cause increase in blood pressure. There will also be excess excretion of hydrogen ions and potassium which will lead to metabolic alkalosis and hypokalemia. Increased blood pressure will cause negative feedback inhibition to renin angiotensin aldosterone system which will result in decreased aldosterone. So we can say that this condition is low renin hypotensive state. And drug of choice is amyloride which will inhibit inac channel in collecting duct. Two more syndromes I will quickly discuss. Next is pseudo hypoaldosteronism. Here there is decreased function mutation of inac channel in collecting duct whereas in Liddell syndrome there was gain of function mutation. So most of your features will be opposite of Liddell syndrome. So it is due to decreased sodium and water reabsorption, there will be low blood pressure. And due to increased absorption of hydrogen and potassium ions, there will be metabolic acidosis and hyperkalemia. The treatment of this condition is supportive, that is salt replacement. Last is Gordon syndrome. Here there is gain of function mutation of sodium chloride pump in distal convoluted tubule. Whereas in Gettelman syndrome, there was decreased function mutation. So most of the feature will be opposite of that of Determin syndrome. So there will be excess sodium and water reabsorption which will cause raised blood pressure. This will cause negative feedback to renin angiotensin aldosterone system which will cause decrease in aldosterone level and in turn will decrease hydrogen excretion and decrease potassium excretion by its action on inac channel in collecting duct. This will cause metabolic acidosis and hyperkalemia. The treatment is use of thiazide diuretics which will inhibit sodium chloride channel in distal convoluted tubule. Now let us summarize what we studied. Disease of sodium potassium 2 chlorine pump in thick ascending lipofinlay 
include Barter syndrome. Disease of NaCl pump in distal conoidal tubule include Gitterman syndrome, which is loss of function mutation, and Gordon syndrome is gain of function mutation. And last is disease of inner channel in collecting duct include Liddell syndrome, which is increased function mutation, and second is pseudo hypoaldosteronism, which is loss of function mutation. Let us quickly see approach to all these syndromes so that you can answer effectively in NEET exam. First step is to see blood pressure. We have to see whether it is high or low or normal. In both sets, next step is to check whether it is metabolic acidosis or alkalosis. High blood pressure with metabolic acidosis, the cause is Gordon syndrome, and with metabolic alkalosis is Liddell syndrome. Coming to low BP side, low BP with metabolic acidosis, the cause is pseudo hypoaldosteronism. And lastly, if there is low BP with metabolic alkalosis, we have to check urinary calcium levels. If it is high, it is Barter syndrome. And if it is normal or low, it is Gitterman syndrome. This is the summary of everything we discussed till now. So friends, this was all about this video. I hope you like the content. This topic is very important for your NEET PG exam. Do like, share and subscribe our channel and also share it among your friends. Thank you.